Well, good morning and welcome to Shorehaven Lutheran Church as we continue our services online during these days of the coronavirus. Today's order of service is the service of prayer and preaching. And so it is a little different, uh, something new. Uh, the congregation responses will be posted also on the screen for you. And during this service, we will not only hear from God's Word, but we will have opportunity to share and confess to one another our faith in God, in Christ His Son, who is our Savior, but also in what Christ has accomplished for us as we consider the words of the Ten Commandments and confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. In our prayers, we want to remember Hazel Poors, who is at Lake West Hospital with the coronavirus. We want to remember all who are shut in during these days. We also want to remember those who serve in our medical and health fields. We are thankful for those of you continuing to send in your offerings regularly through the U.S. Postal Service. Please continue to do so. And as we begin our service, let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God then dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We join in singing two verses of Now All the Vault of Heaven Resounds. A reading from Acts, the second chapter. Now Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus, whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, 
in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sin, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words, he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from Peter's first letter, chapter 1. If you call on him as father who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the salvation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for your sake, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart, since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of the grass. The grass withers, and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news that was preached to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel from St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a mighty prophet in deed and word before God and all the people and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some of our women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, He interpreted to them all the scriptures concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going, and he acted as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and those who were gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road 
and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. We share together the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. We join in singing our sermon hymn, Alleluia, Jesus is Risen, verses 1 and 2. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Our text for today comes from the end of our gospel reading. Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? Our gospel reading takes place In the late afternoon or in the early evening of Easter, two disciples, one named Cleopas and the other one unnamed by the gospel writers, were walking together, heading from the Passover celebrations in Jerusalem to a small town of Emmaus, about seven miles outside Jerusalem. That would be like walking from here at Shorehaven to my home up in Eastlake, or from here at church to Lutheran High School East. A doable walk but it would take maybe about two to three hours, depending on your pace. And there's nothing to note in the text that these two disciples were in any rush to get to Emmaus. They were just on their way. Their destination was not the primary focus, however. Instead, their attention was on the events of the previous couple days. The events of Jesus' arrest, his trial, his beating, his crucifixion, his death, and now a report from some of the women that where the body should have been, there was just angels and the talk of resurrection. The topic was their conversation, not only occupying their time, 
but it was a conversation that was creating fellowship with one another. Oh, there's that word, fellowship. Something that you and I yearned for during these days. For it's been over a month since we've been able to worship together in this place. It's been over a month since we've been able to share God's Word face-to-face at Bible class. It's been over a month since we've been able to share the events of our week over a cup of coffee in the lounge. Over the past month, we have yearned for fellowship. And our conversations regarding this coronavirus might have surprisingly similar aspects even to the conversation of these disciples on the road. We speak of what we used to do. The disciples spoke of their life as it had been with Jesus. We speak of what we desire to do. The disciples would speak of their anticipated life with Jesus. We speak of the latest news reports and look for direction. And the disciples would review the events leading up to and even now including the reports of the women, trying to find sense of it all. We speak of hope and confidence as we listen to our civil authorities and medical experts. And the disciples spoke of dreams that they had when they had fellowship with Jesus. Deep down, we yearn to be together one to another again. We desire to be with our extended family, and with our friends. Deep down, the disciples longed to be again together with Jesus. But how empty and how confused, how isolated they must have felt, longing for direction and longing for interpersonal fulfillment. It was in this conversation that Jesus himself came near to them and began to walk with them. He is the very fellowship that they longed for. However, in their sorrow and their misunderstanding of God's plan and their own expectations, their eyes were kept from recognizing the fellowship with Jesus. The Emmaus disciples couldn't recognize Jesus in their presence, but he was there. This other man who joined them was there. And so here Jesus was, face to face with them, but they didn't know him. Their sorrow and the circumstances of life can cloud vision. Even ours, even many of the greats of Scripture, consider Moses just as an example. Moses was a man who God used to set Israel free from Egypt's chains. Moses did wondrous signs before nations declaring the one almighty God. Moses saw God face to face, but even Moses doubted. Instead of believing that water would gush from a rock simply by speaking to the rock, Moses doubted. And so he hit the rock twice with his staff, the same way he did 40 years earlier. Yet God had only commanded Moses, speak to the rock, and the people would have their water. But in Moses' doubt, he relied on only what he knew from the past. He doubted God's future. On the Emmaus road, the disciples, trying to make sense of Jesus' death, doubted all they knew from the Scriptures. The whole scripture pointed directly to the Messiah. And now here comes Jesus, who patiently invites them, tell me, what things have happened? What do you know? And so they shared. They confessed Jesus was a prophet, mighty before God and man. He worked wonders and miracles and spoke with the authority of God before man. They shared the wishful desire that he had been the one they hoped would release them from Roman rule to a time of national independence. They spoke of his betrayal, death, and burial, and now on the third day, they spoke of angels and resurrection. They spoke that some went to the tomb and did find it empty. They spoke all the right facts. 
But in their doubt of Scripture, they missed putting it all together. Jesus, now a part of their fellowship, helps them. He focuses the lenses of their understanding to see what was necessary for God to do. It was not only necessary for God's Messiah to speak with authority to the people, but to speak with authority to Satan, to sin, and to death itself. It was not only necessary for God's Messiah to show might and power to the people for their faith, but to demonstrate the power of God over Satan, over sin, and over death. And so Jesus takes time on that walk to teach them from the Old Testament prophecies, from the Old Testament prophets and promises, from the Psalms, that God's Messiah would give up everything in order that the people would be released from sin, from death, and from the pressure that Satan exerts on this life. Jesus taught in the Sermon on the Mount that he had come to fulfill the law, and his perfect life did just that. He is the living embodiment of God's perfection. He taught, as Abraham was told to sacrifice his only son Isaac to God, God stopped Abraham's arm, but God did not stop the wrath upon his own son, Jesus. God's wrath was poured out upon him on the cross, and death enveloped him and took him. God's love for you and for me is so great that he gave his only son for you that you may have eternal life. We remember how Israel was told to trust the blood of the Lamb and the death would pass over them on the night of the tenth plague. John the Baptist looked at Jesus and said, Look, there is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. It was Jesus' blood shed on the cross that we trust to have our sins washed away and to assure us that death itself would have no forever hold on us. Abraham was told, all people will be blessed through you. St. Paul reminds us that by faith in Jesus' death and resurrection, we are all sons of Abraham and heirs of all of God's promises. King David was promised his kingdom would endure forever. And Jesus, the son of David, now lives triumphant from the grave and reigns as king forever. Adam and Eve were promised that the Messiah would crush the head of the serpent who ushered in sin into this world. Jesus' perfect sinless life offered for us on the cross defeated Satan and his payment for all sin. Jesus focused their eyes to see God's Messiah within the Scriptures and the necessity of his suffering and his death. Not only his death, but the necessity of his resurrection, whereby death can no longer touch him, and he will live again forever. And so at the end of their walk, as they gathered around the table, Jesus blessed the bread, and he gave it to them. And at this, the eyes of the Emmaus disciples recognized Jesus and then he vanished from their sight, and yet they rejoiced in their fellowship that they had had with him as their Lord and teacher on the road. They said, oh, did not our hearts burn within us along the road while he opened the scriptures to us? And with that joy, they left and went back to Jerusalem to find the eleven at what was probably a much faster pace with a very different conversation. A conversation still full of Jesus, but a conversation full of the resurrected Jesus. It's easy to miss fellowship with Jesus. We miss the fellowship of others during this past month, but it's also easy to miss fellowship with Jesus. 
We get caught up in seeing the inconveniences and speculating on the unknown future. And we might miss that Jesus has walked right up to us, joined our journey, and begins through his patient love to begin to work to refocus our eyes. It's easy to miss that. But with Jesus alongside, he listens to what we know. He listens to us speak of restriction, of the range of other people's behaviors, of the ideal timetable for reopening business. He listens to us. And then he begins to refocus our eyes to see that his hand is working even within all of this. Consider how visible churches are right now. Not only is the gospel message proclaimed within the walls of the church, but via technology, God's word is coming out into homes through personal computers, through tablets, through the phones of both members and non-members. The message of Christ is being heard in many, many, many additional places, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And that's encouraging. For St. Paul reminds us that faith comes from hearing, and hearing from the word of Christ. Jesus spoke to the Emmaus disciples, and the faith was created in them by his words. The Holy Spirit continues to use Jesus' words not only just to strengthen our faith, but to create faith in others, welcoming them into the kingdom of God. Jesus is journeying with us today. And faith is evident during hard times. St. Paul encourages us, we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in our bodies the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may be seen in our bodies. We live lives of faith, lives that sacrifice to serve others so that they may also see Christ's love as his sacrifice for them. We need to be reminded of all these promises and of his continual presence so that we who are being used to deliver the message of his promises that are fulfilled in Jesus, we become the living, visible presence of Jesus within their lives. So who else to give hope to those who feel hopeless than the very people of God to which hope has been given. So lift up your eyes today. See Jesus within fellowship with you, with you today on this road. Hear again his promise that all you need is supplied by him. Listen to his words. Let them fill your heart with joy and a burning desire to hear more. Walk with him to see how you can speak and live this life of faith into the lives around you. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon with all our heart and with all our mind, 
let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Church here and scattered throughout the world, for the proclamation of the gospel and calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and the homeless, for the widowed and the orphaned, for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and the dying and for all who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those working specifically from our midst in health and human services during this pandemic, we ask your blessing upon Sue Ryan, Joy Markle, Stacia Hackman, Darlene Palumbo, James Roth, Kim Murphy, Barb Lavalley, Lori Combs, Janet Polensky, Kristen Smiley. And we ask you to bless those suffering in body and pray for your healing, especially Carol Keller, Hazel Pores, Rosemary Bonacci, Lori Crow Frazier, Patrick Cross, Greta Pate, Sharon Tizano, Tom Marino, a member with long-term back pain, and those we name silently in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we pray together Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all my things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. And we join in singing verses, stand, verses 3 and 4 of Alleluia, Jesus is Risen. us 
asunder and Easter is bright. Cherubim sing, O grave be open, swathe us in wonder, adorn us in white. Jesus is risen and we shall all rise. Give God the 